Well, hello, everybody. Steven Sitkowski here. Welcome to this week's edition of Market Insights, where we take a look at what's moving the stock market. Let me share my screen. Hoping all of you are well, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, enjoying the last little bit of summer, where we have a month left, then most of our favorite time of the year, fall, which is also a time of renewal in the market, typically. We'll talk a bit more about that. I want you to know that this uh, presentation is for educational purposes only and not intended as investment advice. So as we approach the market, primary considerations, what are the fundamental influences that are moving the markets? Uh, what is the overall market trend? what's happening within the various sectors of the market and individual stocks that might be making a move. So what's moving the markets? Well, they seem to have embraced the speech that Chairman Powell gave, head of the Federal Reserve, um, on Friday from Jackson Hole. And basically, I think the reason that the market embraced it is because he didn't say anything new. Inflation is too high. Well, we know that. The Fed has a targeted inflation rate of 2%. And the inflation rate is still running above 3%. Core inflation is higher than that. He said that we might have to elevate interest rates uh, longer. He's been saying that every single speed. So we didn't get anything that was novel nothing that raised the alarm. Let me tell you what the markets enjoy, predictability. And that's what they got out of the good chairman. Looks like China is going to have to start using some type of stimulus to kickstart their economy. Um, could be that they pump money into the economy. It could be the lowering of interest rates. Um, a week ago, they lowered their one-year rates. They didn't touch their five-year rates. Um, it may be that they're just more sympathetic to, to business, giving them a higher level of confidence that they're not going to come in and impose some restrictive policy as they've done from time to time. August was a tough month. Um, as of today, the markets were down about 4% on the month. 10-year Treasury it's now at 4.218%, pretty steady as is oil in the low 80s. What to watch um, this week? Well, on Tuesday, we have the Case Shiller home prices coming out, the job openings, also known as the Jolt Report. Um, we're expecting that to come in at about 9.5 million. Uh, consumer confidence number comes out. Then we have ADP employment. We have the GDP number. Um, pending home sales Thursday. Initial jobless claims. That happens every Thursday. Uh, the PCE index has personal consumption expenditure and the core PCE. Both of those could be pretty important. Friday, we have uh, the unemployment rate and the wages. We also have ISM manufacturing numbers coming out. So pretty busy um, news week. Any of those things capable of moving the markets? Um, last week's heat map looked like this. Uh, NVIDIA was down. AMD was down a bunch. The bright red means down more than 5%. Um, Amazon, the most of the banking financial sectors were down a bit, uh, but there was plenty of green to be had. Um, and it was uh, a move toward more conservative stocks last week. I don't really expect to see that trend uh, continue, maybe through September. You know, we're, we're dealing with an issue of seasonality. September is normally a down month in the market. So, you know, money managers tend to be a bit more conservative. Um, but that should be short-lived. Year-to-date, heat map, um, Eli Lilly up over 50%, Tesla almost 100%, Google 
nearly 50%, Amazon nearly 60%, uh, NVIDIA has just crushed it, 213%, Meta 140%. There's been, in big tech, some huge gains to be had. I hope that you picked up on some of those. Um, market breadth. So one of the things that I look at are new highs versus new lows. And on both the New York Stock Exchange as well as on the NASDAQ, we can see that many more new lows. These are 52-week lows versus 52-week highs. So we do have continued pressure in the market. Biggest uh, movers of the week, uh, Tesla up 10%, Moderna, um, Palo Alto Networks, uh, all those up about 10%. See Hasbro, Autodesk, Intuit, NVIDIA rebounded from the previous week. Um, Cadence, uh, Design, Accenture, Eaton Corporation all had nice weeks. Stocks trading above their 50-day moving average moved up just a tick. Um, we're now at about 33% which is not great. So we don't have big participation right now. Uh, where are the returns? Well, if we sort of segment it out, large cap uh, growth, 27.8% so far for the year and small cap has been the laggard. Earnings recession um, could be over. Look at how we're expecting earnings to climb. Moving forward, it's great for the stock market. We have strong economic uh, trends, and the economy is in really, really good shape. And earnings this week, you know, we don't have any biggies. Uh, Best Buy, Hewlett Packard on uh, Tuesday, um, UBS Campbell's on Thursday. And the Fed probabilities, so there's an 80% probability as of right now that for the next Fed meeting that'll be coming up uh, September 20th, that they will hold interest rates. But there's about a 50-50 chance that they will raise rates between now and the end of the year. And then we'll be expecting some rate cuts next year. I don't see that happening until late next year. Year-to-date uh, returns, sector by sector. Communications, technology, and discretionary have done very well year-to-date. Uh, the defensive stocks, financials, real estate, healthcare, staples, and utilities, not so much. So knowing which sectors to be in, it's gonna be critically important to your returns. Let's take a look at the charts. See what's happening. Let's look at the S&P 500. So you can see for the last six months, it's been bullish. Crossed below the 50-day moving average right here at 44.37. And now it looks like that 50 days acting as a level of resistance. So to gain any momentum, we have got to bust through that and then hopefully climb above about 4,600. Will that happen? We'll be watching. It would be surprising if it happened in September, unless on September 20th, when the Fed announces their next interest rate um, move or lack thereof, that there are some dovish comments by Mr. Powell. How about the Qs? So NASDAQ 100 Trust, same kind of profile. And then the Russell 2000. Well off the 50-day moving average. Um, looks like it's building a base here, so maybe poised to go higher. This is typically... Um, a proxy for the economy. Heavy in industrials and materials, U.S. companies, small cap. So, 
there's a wrap for this week. I will be back with you uh, next week. We'll keep looking at the market, seeing where opportunities lie. Till then, be blessed. Bye for now.